Expository preachers often breeze past certain sections of Paul's letters, especially the endless list of greetings like greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas. It's a surefire way to put the congregation to sleep. But if we're paying attention, these passages sometimes can hit us with some really cool examples of undesigned coincidences. Now, as a quick refresher, an undesigned coincidence happens when one account of an event leaves out certain information, and another recording of the same event, often unintentionally, provides us with the missing details. This helps address questions that arise from the first account. See my first video in this series if you need more of an explanation. Now, consider this passing reference in Romans 16, 3 through 4. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. That's a really nice compliment, Paul, but what exactly is the story here? If we only had Paul's letter to the Romans, these references would just be left hanging. So, for starters, the fact that this greeting is in the letter to the Romans implies that Prisca and Aquila had lived in Rome. Now, let's flip to Acts 18.2. It talks about Aquila and Priscilla, who were in Rome, but they had to leave due to an order from the Emperor Claudius. This aligns with the Roman historian Suetonius' account, who tells us that Claudius expelled all the Jews from Rome, which confirms Luke's accuracy. It looks like they might have returned to Rome after the expulsion had settled down. That's interesting, but there's a lot more to the tale. Now look at this. Paul calls them fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Well, in Acts 18, we see that Paul made tents with them, and when he left, they went along with him. So it's fair to say that they worked together, even though Paul explicitly mentions it only in his greeting to the Romans but Acts gives us more details. Now, for a third point, Paul mentions that Aquila and Prisca risked their necks for him. Well, how so? Check out Acts 18, 12 through 17. There we read that Paul gets into trouble with the Roman authorities, and a Corinthian named Sosthenes faces a beating from the crowd. If Aquila and Priscilla were working with Paul in Corinth, it's evident that they were also in risky situations and face similar dangers. Now, let's talk about the fourth and final point. Paul mentions that the Gentile churches are grateful for Aquila and Prisca. This stands out, especially considering the letter's overall themes. Going back to Acts 18.2, again we learn that Aquila, though a Jew, was expelled from Rome during the time of trouble in the Jewish quarter related to someone called Crestus, which is often a common Roman mix-up with Christus. Despite being Jews themselves, Aquila and Prisca worked with Paul, who right there in Corinth shifted his focus from the Jews to the Gentiles. From then on, he successfully spread the gospel among the Gentiles. So Prisca and Aquila, though Jews, played a role in ministering to the Gentiles, earning them the heartfelt thanks of these Gentile churches. Now, let's take a look at just one other example from the same list of greetings, this time in Romans 16, 1 through 3. There, Paul speaks highly of Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Sancriae, asking others to welcome her in a manner befitting the saints. He also notes that she's been a generous supporter, not just to many, but also to Paul himself. Now, why does Paul praise a deacon from Sancriae? Well, since Paul is likely writing from Corinth, Sancriae may be close by, but we don't need a map to confirm this, though it does, as Acts tells us that Paul visited Sancriae after leaving Corinth. So these seemingly mundane lists of greetings actually provide us with several points of indirect connection, consistency and harmony with the events and acts, even without directly using the exact same words. This indicates that the person who wrote acts likely journeyed with Paul, supporting the claim made in the we passages. This is a big deal because skeptics like Bart Ehrman will say that the author of acts is just basically inventing stories, and never did really travel with Paul. But I think, as we've shown in this particular video and the previous videos in the series, Ehrman's assertion is completely unfounded. Stay tuned as we continue to explore more examples, and there's a whole playlist that we've been working on for the past few weeks, and so check that out in the description down below, and you can get up to speed.